anyway, thanks thanks for uh, jumping on the channel and having a chat. Um, and you know, I just wanted to um, uh, introduce myself. I've, I've been playing drums for about two and a half years now. Um, still learning, obviously. It's a pretty young channel. Um, and what I wanted to do is just get some insights from other drummers, um, uh, people that can actually play. And uh, so, um, if I can, if I can just get you to introduce yourself, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. Of course. Okay. So my name's Emma Taylor, uh, but most people know me as Sounds Like Emma or Love to Learn Drums. There's actually kind of two channels I end up going under, but I usually end up being called Sounds Like Emma. And uh, I am obviously a drummer, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, um, and I post uh, educational drum videos on multiple platforms across social media, and it's it's done quite well. It's it's gone well. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, it definitely has gone well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the, the the basic basic overview of me. But what questions can I answer for you specifically? Ah, cool. So, uh, so can you tell us a little bit, you know, of some of your hobbies? Uh, are you in a band? Are you in multiple mm -hmm. bands? Uh, do you do session work? Things like that. Yes, I am currently in, well, d <laughs> so there's original, in terms of originals bands, I'm in uh, one called Alona Mayu, which is an interesting spelling. Um, but it's my main band that I've been in since about 2019. Um, the singer Alona is actually uh, someone who works with me on admin for the Sounds Like Emma stuff. So we're kind of quite interlinked. Um, but that's kind of indie rocky stuff. And we've got to do some really cool music videos and things like that. You can check out on YouTube. But Alona Mayu, uh, I also work with a folk pop poppy artist called Bryony Dunn um, which was really cool back in March I got to go to Wales and do some studio recording with them and that was a lot of fun that was amazing um, so I'm working with them a little bit and then I also have worked with uh, an artist called Ariel a guitarist in America I did a tour with her earlier this year in the UK um, right. so that's kind of original stuff I'm trying to think if I'm missing anybody I don't think so and then um, uh, I do the classic musician thing which is function work uh so i'm in i kind of depth for one band called central avenue and then i also play in a band called 29 fingers uh which is a lot of fun uh lots of outfits some tartan uh and lots of inflatable instruments so it's a lot of fun uh, in terms of hobbies though i mean i kind of i'm very fortunate to be in the position to kind of work do my hobby some people might say that's not a good position to be in but I I enjoy doing video editing and uh, obviously music and I do enjoy film photography as well but I don't get to do it very often um, so writing music and stuff like that that's my hobby anyway that's what I do anyway because I play a couple of instruments so I kind of end up doing like a little rotation <laughs> between all of them when I get bored of one I start playing the other um, yeah which is a really nice position to be in. So yeah, that's kind of hobbies and stuff like that. Right, excellent. So the um, obviously I can see that it's a rolling kit you got there. Mm -hmm. um, so what? What? Tell me what? What sort of setups you like? What? What have you got apart from the rolling kit? Yeah. So Roland TD30, my 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 angel, my baby. I love it very much. Um, I've had it since I was like 15, I think. And before that, I had a TD. I think it was three um so oh, I've been yeah. a Roland gal all the time and then yep. before that there was like one of, have you ever seen like the flat uh drum kits that are about this yeah, big yeah. like I had one of those and then I had to go to that. yeah um <laughs> I think it was a Yamaha thing I can't remember now but anyway in terms of gear I've got now I have a Tama Star Classic which I bought after I finished uni I splurged I kind of saved some of my uni money and um, bought myself one of those and it was a very good investment a heavy investment because I bought the really heavy hardware like Yamaha stage hardware which weighs a ton which in hindsight I probably should have bought lighter hardware because little old me five foot four or five lifting these hardware boxes that where <laughs> I don't even know how many kilos it is but I literally have to get people to help me with this stuff because it's just yeah. so heavy oh. um, so to anyone who's listening who's thinking of buying hardware and is thinking of doing gigs 
go light. <laughs> just well, I, I think anybody paper. who's listening, I think anybody who's yeah. listening really is get a different instrument because the drum is always the last one to oh, leave. Oh, Jesus, tell me about <laughs> it. No, the sound guy is the last one oh. to leave. Yeah. I feel for them at gigs because they just have to set up everything. I'm like, oh my god, I don't have it so bad. <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Um, but in terms of uh, so Tama Star Classic kit, but I also have uh, right now Zildjian K Hybrid Custom Cymbals, um, and I've had them again since I bought the drum kit. One of them actually I've got down here <laughs> uh, has seen better days. I've actually had this repaired twice. Um, I don't yeah. think that's very, it's not very symbol shaped. So it got the first dink out of it and then it broke again straight after I got it repaired. And I was like, <sighs> but anyway, then I bought another symbol and then I went to the UK drum show and started talking to companies where I was like, I might actually have not needed to buy more symbols. I might actually end up with some kind of given to you. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. But yeah. um, I found with the Zildjian K Hybrid Customs that well producer i've worked with is like they're very bright so if you're thinking of doing recording be aware of that um i, th I would love to get some darker symbols but i don't get to play the acoustic all that much really unless i'm gigging uh and most of the time that's just taking breakables and breakables is just cymbal mm -hmm. snare drum pedal but um yeah. and that's that's heavy enough <laughs> when you're traipsing through yeah. London. um but yeah yeah i i miss being able to play as much acoustic as i could but alas. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I've chosen to go with Feisty. Mm -hmm. uh, because Nico McDonald, obviously, yeah. obviously yeah. He's, my, he's my hero. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd love to get him on, on here. But anyway, we'll see see how we go. I, I mm -hmm. highly doubt it. He'll be too busy. You never but, know. But um, I'm running all the, um, the 602s. The Feisty mm -hmm. form the 602s. And they, they've got a very nice bright sound as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I've got a 22 inch ride. Uh, I've got a, a Rude, a couple of other, others, like all, pretty much all Pisces, except for one little splash, and that's a UFIP. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it sounds like glass breaking when you hit it, and it's, it's pretty yeah. good. So, nice. yes, I, yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, I'm, I've got Mapex, I've got all Mapex kit. Um, I've got a custom 10 inch made for it. Uh, just so I could do the Iron Maiden stuff, so it's nice Love and that. Like, the real Brilliant. eye. Yeah, yeah. So nice. that's and that's, that's got a lot of crack. Yeah, yeah. I find yeah. I have a I get compliments on my snare drum all the time. It's a it's a tiki snare drum, and that's a kind of build your own snare drum brand. I didn't build it, but a, yeah. I bought it off of someone I knew at uni who bought it off of somebody else. So someone else built it. <laughs> um, but it's this quite for a thirteen inch snare drum. It's actually quite deep. I've forgotten how deep it is specifically. It might be six and a half. I can't remember now. Um, but it it just sounds great. Tuned high, it sounds. It's just, I don't know what yeah. wood it is. Either. I don't know. I'm not really a gearhead, so I just go. It sounds good. Don't doesn't really matter what's made of. It sounds it, good. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. It has to sound good. And um, I find if it sounds good to me, the sound guy usually doesn't like it. But it sounds good to me, and that's <laughs> um, that's his job yeah, to go. It's usually so the I, way. Yeah. yeah, I'm louder than everybody else, and therefore everything is right in the world until the sound guy comes along and ruins everything. Yeah, excellent. So, what, what, um, with the uh YouTube channel that you've started, mm -hmm. uh, the, the one which you're showing people how to do fills and, and simple things like that, when did yeah. you first kick that off? Um, oh god, I the, uh, the Love to Learn Drums YouTube, I can't imagine it was before the start of this year like but we only really started getting to it a couple months ago honestly it's it's not taken long to get once we got past about 10k followers it just went shoop, um yeah. and we're kind of building quite rapidly which is fantastic um because a lot of uh what i've done so far has been there's not been a lot of kickback and and it's it's not in terms of I would love to make loads of money out of this. It's more a case of like being able to make it sustainable for everybody because yeah. I started to bring on more people to help out and make it as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. And so having it grow is always a fantastic thing because it means I could start to like pay people around me because that's the, that's the goal, <laughs> really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's 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 great. I, I, I did have a quick look at um, Ilona 
Mayu. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's everyone's was? everyone struggles. Yeah, that was close. That was close. Alone yeah, Mayu or close. Mayu, whichever you prefer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a, had a couple of look at the videos and and uh, I actually really dig it. I think it's pretty it's right. pretty cool. Thank so you. when it gets heavier, I, I like it a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, there's a yeah. couple of you know, real chunky sort of things in there, but uh, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. I, I like it. Our, our producer is, um, uh, we've known him since uni, and he is just one of the most talented heavy metal producers. And actually mm -hmm. what he does for us is like his lightest stuff. He is really into like death or like hardcore stuff. Uh, <laughs> and he makes it sound just absolutely great. Man is, he's king of ping, UK king of ping. Uh, Ryan, fantastic guy. Well, yeah, excellent. So, um, and you, you said you got the other channel, the other YouTube channel. Yes. Which is so we've all got about drums or something, or. Uh, so okay, so my YouTube channel, the Sounds Like Emma YouTube channel, is more of my personal channel, and there's a, I've not put as much energy towards that. I love creating my own content for it, but all of my attention has been on creating drum videos and content. So the Love to Learn Drums is basically. Uh, the longer versions of all the videos that I put on Instagram and TikTok and other and Facebook, um, because there's certain time limits with different platforms. TikTok posts as long as you like, they don't care. But mm -hmm. Instagram is a minute and a half, and it's quite hard to explain some of this stuff in a minute and a half without splitting things into parts, which I don't, I wish we didn't have to split them into parts because I don't think anyone wants that, but there's a 90 second limit, so it is what it is. Um, Facebook I believe is 90 minutes, uh, 90 seconds now, which is good because it means we can just move them over. But like YouTube shorts is where it gets really tricky because that's a minute. And so taking our videos like well, my videos that are what sometimes two and a half minutes, turning that, trying to get a minute out of that that makes it make sense. Nightmare. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> it's a oh, challenge. Yeah. It, well, one one thing I, I've noticed is you actually make it set, you make it fun to learn as well. You, you're not just saying you need to do this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And um, and like I can see people going, oh, that's a bit boring. But you actually put a bit of fun behind it, and it, and it really comes across well. I, I thought, that's what I've, I thought. I'll oh, I'll reach out. I'll see if I can get a hold of you, and um, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and and hopefully promote something. And um, yeah. And, uh, and you know, if I can get more people to follow you, even better, even oh, better. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, the, whole uh, goal, the whole goal is to make things fun because music at the end of the day, it, we play instruments. It's the play. Yeah. That's the whole point. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. And I found with um, like I play, I'm having muck around, I should say, with guitars. So I've got a guitar Same. here, bass guitar Same. as well. And, <laughs> It's, when you finally nail something, it's like, oh, that's great, fantastic. But yeah. a lot of the times, especially with the guitars, I get very frustrated and it sort of puts me off a bit. So if you can be fun and make it fun to learn, it makes it so much easier to learn. Drums, and, uh, I always maintain, is uh, the barrier to entry to drums is a lot lower than any other instrument. Obviously, there's infinite amount of nuance once you get into it but to like get over that threshold of being able to play to something you can get there mm -hmm. very quickly whereas guitar it sounds shite for the first 10 years yeah. <laughs> like violin it always sounds yeah. crap unless you're a virtuoso kind of thing so it's like it's so much harder um i find i, I admire guitarists quite a lot because i love guitar but mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I'm the same. Beast, different beast. Yeah. And what what I like about the drums though is is all the limb independence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it if scratches you can get like that, parts of your brain. You get going, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with the double kick. Um, yeah. Some days I can do it, and it's perfect. And some days I I sound like I'm galloping down the road. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, what is going on? I mean, you you're know? in the right territory. If you're playing Iron Maiden and you want to gallop, that's good. Surely. Well, that's right. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, um, and what, what Nico does with his single foot, you know, it, it's like, I, I can't keep up with that. I've got to do, I've got to do double pedal for, especially the Wicker Man. Yeah. I it's, cheat. it's just, boom, boom, yeah, boom. I, I cheat completely because I use a technique called heel toe. I don't know if you've come across it. Um, like, 
yeah. yeah, but you have to have like I'm at an advantage because I've got smaller feet being a woman, so I can actually fit my foot on the pedal to be able to do heel toe. If you've got bigger feet, then it's kind of can't really get it. Um, because I I have a double pedal. It's right there. Do I play mm-hmm. it? No. no. <laughs> I never got along with it, and I I just never really because I'm not that into the heavier kinds of music either. I guess so. I'm not so like convinced that I want to do it but I see people playing double pedal sometimes and I'm like oh yeah. it's like when I see people playing traditional grip I'm like oh, yeah I can't do that all I'd I love to be able to do that but I just know what it would take <laughs> to oh. get to the level I want it to be compared yeah. to normal playing you know yeah. and yeah, yeah I find uh with double pedal left foot stuff is like it improves your left foot for hi-hat stuff immensely mm-hmm. obviously um, so maybe doing left foot high hat exercises might work counterintuitively for you um, yeah. and making things better. But I find the, yeah, it's just unbelievably infuriating, especially if you've been playing with your right foot for so long and you know what's yeah. going on, but you can't translate it to the left. It's actually a really good exercise for me as someone who's been playing for quite a long time to put myself in those shoes, because then I understand what it's like for a newer drummer, say, trying to figure out their left hand which for me I figured out eventually it took a long time but like it actually is really good to have something like that to be able to go ah I remember why this was a pain in the ass <laughs> I can relate <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly exactly oh um, so you've had some recordings yes with, uh, yeah, new yeah. One. Is, is there a full yeah. album out yet there isn't there isn't an album in the works as such in fact I, I i haven't looked much into the industry kind of uh talk about it but i've seen a lot of stuff saying like i think for a while people have been saying albums are dead kind of thing but um i think there's at least an ep in the works for Alona. um yeah. but I, in march uh i recorded an ep with Bryony dunn as well and that hasn't been released yet um but that's in the works too uh, I think I, we got the masters literally a couple of days ago and that was really really cool a fantastic experience because um I haven't been able to record in a studio like that in like a residential not residential what's the word uh can't remember That's, now uh, yeah no where you just sit like you're there for a week or a couple of days and you can oh, just okay, re- yeah. that um and you can just really sit in and relax and stuff. And they had so much fantastic vintage equipment as well. The guys really knew what they were doing. This is um, Studios, so Studio WZ uh, in Wales. Uh, fantastic. And you stay in their house and they cook you breakfast and it's amazing. Um, and they're lovely. Um, but I, I learned a lot of lessons from that because for so long I've been, the recordings I have done have been rock hitting the hell out of the drum kit just hit the thing because it's probably going to get triggered later down the line anyway kind of stuff and i'm like okay this was a completely different thing where i was like oh the drums do sound different if you don't hit them as hard and there is a limit to how hard you should hit them kind of thing there is more nuance to this than you thought emma um because obviously i've been playing on electric kit most of the time um Mm -hmm. and so when i do get on an acoustic kit there is a time of adjustment to it and once that period's over, it's such a wonderful feeling because it's like you cannot beat acoustic drums. You can't. Um, but anyway, I digress. Uh, so I did that recording. Uh, what else have I done? I can't remember now. There's nothing. Those are the those are the bigger ones. I have done all the the drums on all the Alona tracks. And mm-hmm. Ryan has made me sound absolutely incredible because he's Ryan uh, and made me sound like I'm, I'm like a god hitting those drums. <laughs> so hard like the amount of compression on those drums is just biblical um but yeah those are kind of my recording experiences really yeah great well excellent with um so you you obviously offer uh, lessons as well mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you yeah. Do, do you do remote lessons as well like with skype and things like that Yes, so most of my lessons are online. The only in-person ones I do are on Wednesdays uh, at a place called the School of Drumming, and it's in Woking here in the UK. And I'm full full booked, I think, pretty much on that. Um, So if you're looking for lessons with me, it's definitely going to be online and over Zoom and stuff like that. And you can get a lot out of Zoom lessons. I know that some people might be a little bit like, well, I want to be in person, but you will still definitely benefit from just having someone looking at your playing 
and seeing what you're doing. The only downside to uh, online lessons is you can't like you. It's not like normal lessons where you can sit with like a CD player. It makes me sound old, but like CD player and play the track and go change this, change this in real time. That's the mm -hmm. only issue. But you can communicate everything else. Obviously, you don't have to um, to get like playing. In fact, you can just talk to each other. Like you don't even have to play any drums, really. You probably get along just talking to people. Um, but yeah, that's really that's really cool. I love that setup. That's brilliant. Yeah. Merchandise. Have you got merchandise? Ah, <sighs> uh, it's 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 not yet is the answer because I have one T-shirt right now that was a tester uh, that I wear for all my stuff when I need uh, something with my logo on. Um, but I would love to do merch. Like mm -hmm. I would love to. It's something I've wanted to do for ages. Uh, it's just the logistics of it haven't worked out because we've been prioritizing growing everything else um but yes especially since doing the drum show and people seeing the t-shirt and they're like oh my god i want one i'm like i want to give you one i do <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's just the logistics of especially worldwide shipping that yeah. becomes a logistical nightmare uh because of shipping costs and stuff like that yeah, so you have, to have like some sort of some sort of uh, yeah. package deal yeah with without your... making it um without making it like cost a fortune for people as well. Like, like for example, if we distribute from the US, it's like a tenner to get it just over here, for example, mm. or, or vice versa. So it's like, and my audience is split between UK and US. So it's a bit like, okay, are we gonna have to set up two stores just to be able to do that? Like what, how is what? Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things that I'd love to do, but it's just the case of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, and you've been playing for fifteen years. Yes. Yeah. So I was about eight when I. Well, I my started lessons when I was eight, but I think I was given. I had like a toy drum kit when I was mm -hmm. about five, five, six, maybe. Uh, at my grandparents' house that I played so much that I just broke it. Um, and my my mum was listening to me and going, "That was actually that doesn't actually sound bad, you know. That that doesn't sound just like a kid." destroying a drum kit it sounds like something's yeah. there so um i went for a lesson when i was about six and i was too small and i couldn't pay attention enough um i personally think i just had the wrong teacher that's my theory now that i'm actually a teacher but anyway um so i waited a couple of the until i was about eight and then i had lessons from there so i don't know what that counts as but quite a while i think quite a while. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I started in high school right um yeah. played for a year and then for some reason I just stopped mm -hmm. and I got back into it about two and a half, probably actually about three years ago. I mm -hmm. uh, bought myself a really cheesy, cheap, cheap drum kit. I went and put all new all new heads on it, tried to make it sound as mm -hmm. good as I could and I, and and I it just, sort of gave yeah. up again because yeah. it just sounded terrible and then I mm -hmm. found this thing behind me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so let's try this again. I actually put a bit of money into it, and uh, it, it sounds amazing. Interesting. The actually, that's that's a, that's a really good point because uh, your perspective is very interesting because that's a perspective a lot of people will have. So, do you think that have it that buying a cheap acoustic drum kit was it acoustic that just didn't yeah, sound? It was acoustic. Yeah. Did you find that that just made things made you not want to play basically Correct. because it yeah. sounded just yeah. Do you think you would have had the same problem if you'd bought a cheap electric kit? That would have sounded I, good, but felt a bit I naff. did have a cheap electric kit. Um, and what it, for, it I, I had problems with the triggering on the double kick. Right. So I'd yeah. kick it, pick it up every now and every second or third hit. And it's like, okay. okay so, and that, that, was, that was about 1800, I think. And and it, was, it actually looked like a like an acoustic kit. Wow, that's interesting. But the brain yeah. was cheap. Yeah. It was made in Taiwan or wherever it was made. Right. You know, some yeah, yeah. Back, back what, which and drum then, kit was it? Out of curiosity. Uh, what was it? Because um, that's important, I think, for people to know is like I if might, they want to play double pedals. May still have a piece, may still have a piece here. One moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, it doesn't even have a brand on it, but that's the that's the Tom. Oh, blimey! Tom. Yeah, it actually looks pretty good, but yeah, it does look good. It's a it's a it's a dual ply. 
Interesting. And, um, just, I, I think the brain was just terrible. Probably, yeah. Or that something was wrong with the bass drum trigger, potentially. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been yeah. too. Interesting. Have you tried plugging that into the Roland brain and using that as a? I have, I have, and but I took the trigger pad out of this ah. and put it into the kick drum, and I still had the same problem. So and then I, I sold it. So I think it's more of a brain. Uh, okay. But just oh, a bad trigger, maybe. Yeah, that's good to but, know. I mean, yeah, but at the end of the day, basically. It's worth investing in some good equipment because otherwise it will put you off. That's it does. I think the yeah 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 yeah. yeah. No, I only ask you because I think that's a useful clip um, in terms of because I I sometimes there's things I can't fully relate to people because I'm not buying beginner equipment for the yeah. first time because I've been through that um, yeah. and my parents made that choice for me because um, I was a kid. Um, yeah. So it's interesting hearing that that does definitely have an effect not that that's a surprise having crapper equipment makes you feel like you don't want to play because it doesn't sound good um yeah. but i think there's there's obviously a fine balance to find would you say how much of that drum kit would you say you need to feel good about playing like well uh the original drum kit uh so it's the uh it's a four uh it, it's got the four toms and the kick yeah. drum and the snare. So that's all yeah. they come with. Mm -hmm. uh, if I just had the hi hats and a ride and one crash, you that, get that's, that's all. Yeah. That's all yeah. I, I really mm -hmm. need. So there you go. Um, yeah. You the, don't need the kit, the, bells and whistles. Yeah. the kit that I have at the at the club, uh, I play in a, in a small German band. It's uh, like folk music. Nice. That's got two toms, a kick mm -hmm. drum. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. and a rod. That's all it nice. is. Nice. I thought when else. you said when you said German, I was like, do you mean German heavy metal in terms of like accept? No, <laughs> like, no, 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 I don't like accept. But my uh, dad yeah. Likes, yeah, my dad likes accept. Uh, that's the only reason I know them. And I was like, wow, that's a niche. That's a niche you got going on there. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah. So I've got I've got that drum kit. That's it's got a bit of warmth in it. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's not as as bright, I guess. Because mm -hmm. it's really so, yeah, and um, yeah, I've got plenty of symbols too. Plenty of symbols, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was heartbroken you. when mine broke because I just have one set of symbols because they just <sighs> spenny. Right. A full set of these hi hats, and these are used very sparingly. Mm -hmm. Why is yeah. that? Nice. Is it coming through? Oh, nice. Yeah, so that's the Iron Maiden ones. Mm -hmm. so Why don't you uh, use them? Surely they're meant to be played. Yeah, they are, but I can't afford another set. <laughs> so I've, I've got the yeah. hi-hats and I've got a, a crash symbol. Mm -hmm. And if I went to get the full set, that's 1,400 pounds. Uh, 14,000 pounds from the <laughs> Nico's drum store. And I'm not spending that much money. Absolutely not. <laughs> hard anyway. no for me. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a hard no. So, um, because we, we went off a tangent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, excellent. All right. Well, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll put all your links in the description. Brilliant. And, Fantastic. Uh, Get all that uh, set up for you, and um, and uh, thanks thanks for coming to join and uh, chewing the fat with me, and we'll uh, hopefully talk again. No worries at all. It's been fun. Sounds great. Excellent. Thanks very much, Emma. Okay. Take care. Yeah.